pole fishing with sweet corn on commercial fisheries has got to be one of the simplest but most popular methods around. Here's my top tips for making the most of this deadly tactic. So let's talk about the area of the peg that I'm going to target and then the rig. First of all, the area of the peg that I'm going to target is five meters out from my fishing position. It's only short range, the water temperatures are nice and warm, fish are active, fish are going to come to me today. I'm not going to have to, I'm not going to, have to actually chase the fish out to 14, 16 meters. I'm gonna make the fish come to me. I'm gonna fish nice and close, really to catch fish nice and fast. Now it's important to find the bottom of that near side shelf. I've plumbed up today, nice heavy plummet. I've found a nice hard area of, area of bottom away from any silt. It's about four and a half, five foot deep where I'm fishing and it's right at the bottom of that near side shelf. So it's perfect. It means I can feed by hand if I need to because it's nice and close, but I'll probably start loose, um, feeding with a pot, but more of that later. Let's talk about the rig. As I say, it's about five foot deep where I'm fishing. I've got a four by 14s, it's a Malman Rube, and that's got a cane top. It's just something that I've asked Gaz to make for me, put a few cane tops in some Malman Rubes, and to be fair, they're working really well. I've got, while we're up here, black hydro elastic, nice all round elastic. You know, I'm, I've been told I'm fishing for nice big F1s today, and obviously there's plenty of carp in here, so black hydro does the job. Nice robust main line. I'm fishing 016 main line. Down to my shot. And I'm using stops today, number nine stops, and I've just spread out eight number nine stops. Just above an eight inch hook length. And the hook length, I'm gonna start on 012 millimeter line. I'll probably up, up that if I start catching plenty of carp later on to 014. I might even go to an 016 hook length. Hook wise, I've got a size 16 Camasan B911. Brilliant hook, brilliant all round hook for sort of meat, corn, soft pellet work. And obviously my choice for today. So that's the kit, let's talk about the feeding. So I've obviously got one bait on my side tray today sweet corn. Let's talk about how I'm going to feed it. The area of the peg that I'm targeting is just down that near shelf. It's five foot deep. I've got to be careful how I feed because I don't want fish coming up in the water. Now what I'm going to do is start off by just potting some corn into the swim. I think we're going to start off by introducing probably a third of a pot of bait. I've already lined up a little marker on the far side and I'm just going to pop the bait in in a nice tight area. I've been told there's loads of fish in this lake and if I start loose feeding bait by hand, those fish are gonna rise up in the water. They're gonna try and intercept the bait as it falls and it hits the surface. And I'm gonna get problems with line bites. I don't want that. I wanna pin my fish right on the bottom where they're easier to catch. So to start with, that is always my opening gambit by potting in some bait. Now later on in the session, or if bites become a little bit trickier, what I would probably start doing is feeding a bit of corn by hand. I'll end up laying my rig into the, into the swim and loose feeding by hand. What that will do, it creates activity on the, on the surface, a bit of noise, bait falling through the water. It just means that fish become more active. They're so tuned into those triggers, the noise and the bait falling through the water and the smell, that you should get quicker bites. But I've got to balance that against getting those line bites, which could be a problem. So this is a simple tip, but I think it's quite important. Just hook in the bait. Now, you pick up a grain of corn, there's two ends to it. There's an open end and then there's a closed end. Now the open end is very soft. And when I'm fishing for sort of wary fish, I'm sitting there for a long time and I want to make sure I hook every single fish, that's the end that I'll hook for those, for those situations. So what I'll do is I'll just go in with the hook, I'll try and grab as much corn as I can and I'll just pull the hook out, a tiny bit of point showing 
and that's perfect. You've got to be careful how you ship it out and obviously every time you strike you're going to be pulling the hook through the corn, perfect for those days where you're only getting one or two bites. Obviously today we're getting loads of bites, we want to be lifting, dropping, making sure the hook, the corn stays on every time we strike. So for those days I like to hook the corn through the rounded end, again get as much of the corn as you can when you hook it, roll the grain of corn round, plenty of hook points showing, and because it's through that robust end of the corn, you know that every time you lift up or every time you strike, as long as you don't strike like Zorro, your corn's going to stay on the hook, you're in the swim for longer, you're making your fishing more efficient. Let's talk about actually presenting the hook bait to the fish. Firstly for me, there's two ways of presenting the bait into the swim. First, first way is to dump the rig down, hold the float probably 10 inch out of the water, wait for everything to straighten out and then slowly lower the float down to the fish. That's a great way when you're catching a lot of fish fast. Second way is to lay the rig out straight in front of you or to the side and let the bait fall on a tight line. Now that can cause problems with foul hooking fish, you lay the float over the top of fish, but a lot of the time, we all know there isn't that many fish in the swim. That's a great way of letting the hook bait fall slowly and catch, catch the eye of you know, quite wary fish. Today I'm catching a few fish, so it's just a case of letting the hook bait fall, holding the float just out of the water and then slowly lowering the hook bait down. And quite often I'm getting a bite just as that hook bait settles, so you know, you've got to be on your game. Once the rig's been in the water for 30 seconds or so, I like to move the float. Just a small lift up, just lift the float out of the water, lower it back down again, maybe slightly drag the float to the, to the side, that can work really well. Again, all you're trying to do is just try and catch the fish's eye. All you, those fish obviously are feeding, they're picking up bait off the, off the bottom. What you're trying to do is make your hook bait stand out and just make a fish instinctively grab your hook bait. Just like that. Perfect illustration, just lower it down and you get a bite just as that hook bait hits the bottom. I mean, they must be so fast at intercepting the bait. And obviously when there's a few fish in the swim, competition's high, and you get bites quickly. There you go, nice F1. And it's worth saying that obviously F1s, they're very delicate feeders. So by lifting the hook bait and lowering it in nice and slowly, you're keeping your main line tight all the time. Your hook bait, the line between your hook bait and your float is nice and tight. You'll get positive indications and you should hook more fish. So a final tip is to be adaptable. Obviously sweet corn, we associate it with catching fish on the bottom, but today the fishing's been so good that I started throwing a, throwing a few grains in, still at only five metres, and the fish have been swirling for them. You know, it's been in, almost impossible to keep the fish pinned to the bottom. So I've had to give in, I've had to start loose feeding a bit of bait. I'm feeding three or four grains of corn constantly now. I've got off my box, set up a little shallow rig, Slapping a grain of corn around, I'm catching a fish, a chuck. It's unbelievable. And they're all quality F1s. Yeah, we caught some better quality carp on the bottom, but the speed that we're catching these F1s and the size of them, that's got to be nearly four pound. The size of them is unbelievable. So there you go. Although I associate corn with fishing on the bottom, it's not always the case. So there you go, just be adaptable.